and welcome to today's class of analog microelectronic circuits uh, so far in the previous classes uh, we were discussing about uh, some of the applications of op amp and um, the applications what we considered are amplifiers uh, inverting non inverting difference amplifiers instrumentation amplifier and uh, different types of amplifiers and uh, i hope you know that uh, amplifiers are considered as one of the linear application of op amp so to just differentiate uh, between uh, the linear and non linear functionality uh, so if you look at an amplifier or the amplifiers what we have considered before uh, what we expect is um, a magnified version of the input signal is what we are expecting so generally if you look for the uh, input output gara of any amplifier not any amplifier i'm uh, not looking for an inverting thing but generally when we go for a uh, input output input output gara of an amplifier uh, it will be of this form right so when the uh, even the input increases output also increases and what we call as a slope of this is nothing but the gain right so this is the gain or in other words we can say that uh, amplifier circuits will preserve the shape of the input signal so whenever there is an increase in input signal output signal also will increase but with the uh, additional gain provided or uh, available from the circuit right so in in those cases um, in all the uh, small signal amplifiers what we have considered including the op amp based amplifier are linear in nature now uh, from today we will look at some of the non linear applications of op amp see the moment we say non linear application uh, one thing which can come to your mind is um, see when i draw the uh, characteristics when i draw the uh, input output gara uh, we are not uh, focusing on some applications which can give you a straight line which is passing through the origin rather show some kind of non linear uh, characteristics so we will uh, we will come to uh, there are there are various circuits or there are various applications we have um, where uh, we can use op amp in non linear way and in a very useful way right so there are lot many non linear functions we can implement uh, with the help of op amps and uh, along with op amp we might use some other components maybe we might use diodes we might use transistors and with the help of those things we can still implement some good uh, useful non linear functions so today's class will be uh, dedicated to understand one such non linear applications of op amp and we will be focusing uh, to uh, something called as uh, rectifiers so when you hear rectifiers uh, rectifiers are some uh, circuits which you know very well uh, especially in the uh, lab what we have done um both half uh, half wave full wave rectifier and the use of that right now <clears throat> here what we are going to discuss is not the regular uh, rectifier so um let me just introduce about, talk about regular rectifiers first and then we'll come to the need of the op amp based rectifier all right so uh, one thing we know about uh, the normal rectifier what we uh, use in our uh, circuits or in our labs are uh if they are made out of silicon diodes uh like a typical rectifier can you tell me what uh what is the range of the voltage this rectifier can rectify uh in one word you can say that rectifier converts a alternating current into a direct current uh but we know that it it need to be filtered out in order to get a proper dc right so for a, no a normal rectifier the circuit what we know or what you have um, um done in lab so far um like what is a, a range what is a minimum voltage that that circuit can rectify can i get some response in the chat whether it will rectify a voltage greater than 10 greater than 100 or greater than 1 or like what is on what basis do we decide or on what basis do we say that rectifiers will rectify voltages above this or below this uh all right any response from your side okay so look at this i am trying to draw the transfer characteristics of a rectifier so here it is v in here it is v out right so if i try to draw the transfer gara of a half wave rectifier uh, tell me how the rectifier gara will look like 
so whether um, when your input increases from zero to positive what are you expecting output also will increase but will the in uh, output uh, will you get output as soon as your input crosses zero or uh, it needs some voltage see the typical diodes what we are relying is based on uh, diodes right and we know that diodes can conduct only after 0.7 if it is a silicon diode so in that case rectifiers also can give output signal uh, only after that cut in voltage of diode so till 0.7 voltage there is no conduction after that what we will get is a cara of this form right this is what we get usually will get from a rectifier uh, so ideally when you draw this curve <coughs> what we uh, what, or how we look at it is uh, for more than zero uh, when input is more than zero uh, you will get an output and input is less than zero you will get an output that output is positive again when your input is less than zero if it is a half wave rectifier output will be zero if it is a full wave rectifier when input less than zero also you will get a positive output right so this is the ideal cara this is the ideal cara of a rectifier but if it is a, a practical rectifier especially when you design with the help of silicon diodes you will uh, get a cara of this form because uh, for uh, signals uh, greater than 0.7 only the diode uh, greater than 0.7 the diode will turn on and then you will your output will follow input or v out will be equal to v in for negative voltages also uh, when the diode turns on uh, for a full wave rectifier it will definitely give you uh, output which is po um, for negative half cycles also you will get positive half cycle right so this is what we generally look at a rectifier typical rectifier or i can say that typical rectifier rectify voltages greater than 0.7 and we are not much bothered about that because um, very common application of rectifier is in a uh, in a regulated power supply where uh, we start from the uh, from the supply main stream we will have 230 volt from that we will use a step down transformer then we will uh, reduce it to a, a tip, uh, specific voltage what we need it can be a 1202 transformer or a 909 and from that we will use this rectifier and we'll uh, get one half cycles of the input signal that is what we, we generally use and since we are looking at a larger voltage this doesn't matter or this um, the 0.7 the, the, that this this zone or the area where you will not get output no even though there is an input signal present you will not get output because of the conduction voltage of trans, uh, diode this zone is called as dead zone that zone is the area where you are not getting any output even though input signal is present and that is due to the conduction uh, uh, voltage of the diode so this is called as dead zone but there are some applications especially in audio applications where you need to um, determine the amplitude of the uh, small signal what you receive where the signal amplitude is very very small uh, say your signal amplitude is in the range of milli or micro volt range you have a milli volt or a micro volt range signal uh, which uh, where you need to uh, rectify it so when for such an application so in order to rectify to rectify millivolt or microvolt range signals uh, we take the help of this op amp along with the diode we take the help of this op amp and such uh, rectifiers which can rectify precisely voltages as small as milli or microvolt range signals are called as precision rectifiers the circuits which are used to rectify uh, precisely uh, the voltages as small as milli or micro volt range are called as precision rectifiers <coughs> all right now uh, we know that with a normal diode so when you have a normal diode this is not possible because a normal diode can turn on so this can be turned on only after 0.7 turned on uh, for uh, input voltage greater than 0.7 only because then only the diode will turn on so now here the idea is uh, use a use a diode instead of using a diode alone use a diode uh, in the along with an open use a diode along with an open so let's see let's go to the discussion i hope you understood the plot where we are going to discuss about precision rectifier so let me write here what we go what we are going to discuss here is called as precision rectifiers which can precise voltages as small as milli or microvolt range 
now we also understood that what a typical rectifier does and what a typical rectifier cannot do right so we are trying to address the issue uh, what a typical rectifier cannot be used and what we need is uh, for a range which is uh, very small or less than 0.7 voltage right so now uh, look at the scenario where uh, say we have we have an op amp plus and minus we are providing an input to the positive and uh, using a feedback from output we are feeding it back to the negative input terminal and now in this case say <coughs> Um, let me also connect uh, one second. Let me also connect a resistance across which we are uh, looking for an output, right? So all right. Now we know that how a circuit of this type will work, right? because there is a feedback established and the feedback you can see that directly output is connected back to the negative input terminal and this type of feedback we call it as negative feedback even though we did not discuss much about this negative feedback which will be done in the next unit uh, for, for the time being we know that a negative feedback is established here and for a typical op amp uh, with an open loop gain of a it can be as large as infinity ideally a can be a will be equal to infinity in this case if you know these two voltages we also know that a virtual short exists here because of the large uh, gain of the uh, large open loop gain of the op amp now voltage at uh, non inverting terminal minus voltage at inverting terminal multiplied by gain is the output voltage this also we know right now <clears throat> uh, so when your gain is very very large so uh, voltage at your um, non inverting terminal one second let me write in this way yeah so we know that this node voltage is v in and this node voltage is v out itself right so uh, by the virtual short property uh, what it, what will happen is uh, v in will be equal to v out or v in can be considered equal to v out when your gain a is sufficiently large right this is something which we already consider or, or which we already know can i get some response from you, your side are you guys listening to this all right yeah thank you so now <clears throat> so this is a normal uh, um, unity we can call this as a voltage follower or we can call this as a unity gain buffer uh, where output is equal to input right and how output is equal to input is by the virtual short property itself all right now uh, this this infinite gain or this uh, very high open loop gain of the op amp is actually ensuring uh, this node especially this output node uh, to track the input voltage right uh, and this will happen both for positive half cycles and negative half cycles irrespective of the input voltage your output will be tracking the input um, and yeah so that is what uh, what is about this unity gain buffer or unity gain voltage follower or whatever we say, uh, we call the circuit now say we uh, so now you can see that this output node is tracking or following input voltage right irrespective of the cycle whether it is a positive half cycle or a negative half cycle now the question is say if i want to come up with a circuit where the output will track input only when um, when there is positive half cycle right? or, or only when there is negative half cycle right so why i am talking about this is what we are going to uh, discuss is about a precision rectifier so we know that precision rectifier uh, or generally when we talk about rectifiers it can be half wave rectifier or full wave rectifier so if it is a half wave rectifier for one half cycle we are expecting an output for the another half cycle we are not expecting an output right so in that context i am asking you what can i do in this circuit in order to make sure that uh, this output will track the input when the input is positive 
and the output will uh, will not track or the output will be equal to zero when your input is negative what modification can i do here can i get some response so definitely i'm going to use an op amp an op amp is here this is plus minus so this is the input voltage of the op amp now the question is yeah so add a diode add a half a rectifier there is simply a diode so how where where should i add the diode what i want to do here is output should track input only when positive half cycle uh, comes and for negative half cycle output should not track before v in all right so if i am adding before v in uh, the input signal coming in will be uh, like the input signal should turn on the diode so that will happen only after 0.7 right so again um, if i do that uh, there is no point in actually bringing an op amp in the picture right yeah i think uh, yeah i'm getting answers from you sir i'm just uh, answering to the uh, responses in the beginning see see i cannot add a diode here in the um, at this point if i add a diode here what will happen if i'm adding a diode here then this diode will turn on only after 0.7 now the whole idea of the circuit is to precisely rectify voltages as small as milli or micro volt right so this is not possible yes the other suggestion is add diode in the feedback path yes that that i can try right so this is v in now i have the feedback path now in the feedback path how will i add the diode i will add the diode in such a way that from this point back to the negative input terminal right so you look at the circuit i am just making only one modification so this is again your output voltage this is resistance r and this is a diode uh, let me call it as d1 right now tell me how uh, this circuit works or look at the circuit and uh, see what hap what will happen <clears throat> so the the whole idea here was Uh, to break the connection uh, between the output and its inverting input right so if i can uh, i am interested in this path this path so for one half cycle i want to break this connection if i am breaking this connection there is no feedback existing here and then i cannot say that um, your output will be equal to input right so that is that is that is done that is gone right so uh, okay uh, coming to the circuit let us see how this circuit work right so let me start with this uh say your input voltage sorry uh let us consider two cases case one is when your v in is greater than 0 when your v in is greater than 0 so what happens when your v in is greater than 0 when your vn is greater than 0 you are actually applying a uh, voltage your input voltage or the non inverting input terminal is going slightly positive when this goes slightly positive i can uh, ensure so there is a um, there is a feedback path existing here right so when this goes slightly positive what the voltage what i can expect here is because uh, initially assume that this voltage is equal to 0 so initially uh, there is no voltage across resistance r so this will be equal to 0 so when there is a positive voltage here we know that the output of the op amp will be a times v in minus or let me write in this way a times a uh, v non inverting minus v inverting this is how the output of the op amp output of op amp is actually here this point right so uh, at the in when initially when i am considering i am assuming that there is no voltage and v out is equal to 0 if v out is equal to 0 uh, the at the the moment uh, when you are uh, when when there is a positive when there is a slight increment at the input terminal what happens your output will be a times of non inverting input voltage right so a times of non inverting input voltage is say if i have 10 to the power of 5 as the uh, open loop gain and your non inverting input terminal say maybe it is very very small it is actually going slightly positive but what is expected output here the output here is actually large the output here will actually go to a high value so whatever it is output here will go to a positive value and whenever this goes to, goes to positive the diode d1 will turn on so whenever your vn is greater than 0 d1 turns on and if d1 turns on what happens there is a feedback path established here so there is a path exists between output and input 
right so whenever there is a path exists between output and input now what is the immediate um, action of the op-amp we know that a virtual short exists and due to this virtual short the inverting input uh, so uh, when there is when d1 turns on this is more or less similar to the unity gain buffer the only difference is there is a battery connected between these two points with the additional uh, voltage of 0.7 so that doesn't matter uh, this almost looks like a unity gain buffer and what happens is whenever the, d, uh, the diode d1 turns on your v out will be forced to be equal to v in so i can say that v out will be equal to v in when your v in is greater than zero right now what is case two let me consider case 2 as being less than 0. The moment when your Vin is less than 0 uh, or when your Vin goes negative, the, the same reflection will be here, right? The reflection at the output point is uh, when your Vin goes negative uh, or goes below than 0, this also turns negative. If this turns negative, this diode D1 turns off. If this D1 turns off, there is no feedback path exists here. This is off. There is no current flowing through the resistance R. That will give you output voltage V out equal to 0. Is this clear? Are there any questions uh, based on this? And now, whenever, yeah, if you have questions, please uh, put it in the chat box. Now, uh, when we have or when we place a diode in the feedback path of an op amp like this, whenever we configure or whenever we place a diode in the feedback path of an op amp like this, we call this circuit as a super diode. This is called as a super diode. Why we are calling it as a super diode? Because now when I use a diode in the feedback path of an op-amp, this diode is able to rectify voltages as small as milli or microvolt range. Right. So a normal diode, an ordinary diode can rectify only voltages greater than 0.7. But now the moment we connect this uh, diode in the feedback path of an op-amp, this will be able to rectify voltages as small as possible and for that reason, we call this configuration as a super diode. Right. This can also be considered as a non-inverting half-wave rectifier. Non-inverting half-wave rectifier. So now for this circuit, I can uh, draw the transfer curve. The transfer curve of this uh, circuit can be drawn like this. If this is V in, this is V out. Whenever V in turns slightly positive, uh, your output will actually grow. Output also will be following input. On the left hand side, there is no response, right? So this is a non-inverting half wave rectifier, right? Yeah, uh, the question, yeah, what, the, what Sanket is asking is, when D1 turns off, <coughs> when D1 turns off, this is an open this this loop is open right when this loop is open uh, now if i want a voltage at the output terminal <coughs> there should be a current flow here right when d1 turns off uh, what i can say what current will be flowing here yeah there is no current right so when there is no current then the voltage also should will be equal to zero All right. Yeah. So what we have discussed now is uh, about one nonlinear application of op amp that is called as precision rectifier. So typical rectifiers will rectify only greater than 0.7, and when we use a diode in the feedback path of an op amp, that can rectify voltages as small as possible, right? And such a configuration we call it as super diode, right? Now, and the circuit also can be considered as a non a non inverting rectifier. Now. If you go for an inverting type of rectifier, if you go for an inverting rectifier, let me, um, inverting, let us look a half wave rectifier first. Yeah, so I'll present one such circuit. Uh, it, this is inverting. So we have this is minus plus and
this is the circuit of an inverting <coughs> half way rectifier right so in the non inverting case we can directly take a op amp and then we can place a uh, circuit over there uh, but for the non inverting so for the inverting half way rectifier this is uh, one of the most popular circuit uh, so let me call this as diode d1 and diode d2 and let this let me number it as r1 and r2 right now <coughs> let us look at the operation of this circuit <coughs> so operation again we can consider in uh, in in two cases let me write it as case 1 when your v in is greater than 0 right so what happens when this v in is greater than 0 so now the, the entire operation of the circuit uh, depends on the diodes d1 and d2 right uh, because see in the absence of diode d1 and d2 we know that the circuit is same as an inverting amplifier look at the circuit uh, say if this diode d2 and this d1 if these two diodes are not there um, the circuit is as simple as a inverting amplifier and for inverting amplifier we know that the gain is equal to minus r2 by r1 now if r1 and r2 are same values the output will be equal to negative of input that is what we uh, we can conclude about the circuit in the absence of doubt in the absence of doubt this is an inverting amplifier uh, where gain is equal to uh, minus r2 by r1 and which which can be made equal to 1 minus 1 when you use equal resistors at both r1 and r2 now look at the circuit uh, what will be the condition of diodes d1 and d2 when uh, input voltage is greater than 0 so yeah what is a uh, what will be the condition in when the input voltage is greater than zero say when you are applying a voltage greater than zero here a positive voltage that is connected to this that will be directly coming at this point of d2 and what happens to this diode d2 this d2 will turn on whenever there is a high voltage whenever uh, voltage increases at this point d2 turns on right d2 turns on what will be the condition of D1? Uh, so look at this. <coughs> look at this condition. Uh, look at this point. Uh, your input voltage is increasing here. Now where the voltage is increasing at uh, this point, right? This point is. Uh, this is actually an inverting input terminal. Now, uh, so immediate response. So at the uh, inverting input terminal, when there is an increase in voltage, what I can expect is let me mark this point let me mark this as some voltage v1 right so uh, <coughs> if uh, when you when this point when v in is positive it is coming to the uh, inverting amplifier and whatever it is the output at this point what i can expect is a negative voltage because uh, even though there is a uh, positive increment here because of the inverting amplifier this node will definitely have a negative voltage if this node is having a negative voltage i can say that uh, d1 turns off so why d1 turns off d1 turns off due to a negative due to negative v1 v1 will be negative that makes your d1 turns off now if d1 turns off this will be an open circuit let me draw the equivalent circuit so d2 is on d2 is on minus plus this is open circuit this is v out now in the feedback you, you, you can see that in the feedback path there is a d2 resistance there is an r2 resistance right sorry d2 diode and r2 resistance now if d2 turns on we can ideally if i assume uh, when your d2 turns on this there will be a short or in the practical case there will be a 0.7 drop but whatever it is there will be a short and this will be the easiest path for the current to flow than r2 path right so in turn i can say that um, the equivalent circuit will be something like this because this path the path through r2 will be disabled disabled in the sense because the other is a short right so <coughs> since this is a short and since output is taken from this point whenever v in goes high can you tell me what is output when v in increases what is v out yeah it will be equal to zero so therefore 
in this case v out will be equal to 0 there is no doubt right v out will be equal to 0 volt the reason is the condition of look at the condition of d2 and d1 and based on that you can actually talk about the output voltage now the same uh, same circuit let me consider the second case second case what i will be considering will be mm, v in less than 0 so what will happen when your v in is less than 0 uh, let us look at this circuit yeah. what is the condition when your v in is less than 0 when your v in uh, reduces here reduces that means a negative voltage here when a negative voltage comes here d2 turns off right so d2 will d2 turns off and what about d1 the negative voltage is coming here this is inverting so the voltage what i can expect at v1 is positive so d1 turns on d1 turns on i'll write this is due to a positive v1 right now look at the condition of the circuit d2 is off so what is the equivalent circuit now the equivalent circuit now is um, So the equivalent circuit now is uh, we have this resistance then minus plus the the diode in this feedback d2 is off so that is open now we have this resistance and this is short and this is v out now this is v in this is r1 and this is r2 right now what is the condition uh, what will be the output here output will be equal to minus of r2 by r1 into v in right now if r2 equals r1 i can write v out is equal to minus of v in but what is v in here here v in is negative since v in is negative v out will be equal to a positive voltage so when your input is negative you are getting a positive output same as input so this becomes a inverting half way rectifier the other one is a non inverting half way rectifier where this is a inverting half way rectifier so if you look at the cara of this i can draw the cara like this this is v in this is v out when your input is greater than zero there is no output output is zero and when your input is less than zero the output is output will be following input but positive all right uh, yeah so this is about a uh, half wave rectifier the two types of half wave rectifier what we can um, make using the super diode all right now um, yeah if you have questions we can definitely have a discussion uh, please put your questions in the chat here uh, quickly i will go to uh, one last circuit which is a precision rectifier but a full wave since we have discussed half wave let us discuss the circuit of a uh, precision full wave rectifier. So I did not stress on the point here. See, look at this. Mm, you are directly getting the expression that output is equal to minus of V in. So that, that means whatever is input voltage, you are actually getting at the output, right? There is no question of whether it is uh, greater than 0.7 or not. Whatever is the input voltage, your output is exactly equal to minus of V in, in this case. And in the other case, in the previous circuit, your output is equal to input. Right. Yeah. Now, coming to the circuit of a uh, for precision full wire rectifier, we use two op amps there. So, let me present the circuit diagram. This is the first op amp. Right. Uh, we have a inverting op amp. This is the input voltage.
right <coughs> this is the first part and now output of this is given to second op amp where this connection exists so both are operating in uh, in feedback negative feedback mode so this is v out and this is v in <coughs> all right now uh, th since these are two diodes i'll just mark it as d1 and d2 so this is diode d1 this is diode d2 now all the resistors i am marking it as r same value equal equal value resistors all right let me consider uh, this node as some node voltage v1 mm -hmm. now let us look at the operation of this circuit so uh, what we need is uh, a circuit which can uh, work which will work for both the half cycles for the positive half cycle as well as for the negative half cycle So look at this again, we explain the operation of the circuit by looking at the input uh, voltage. Let us look for positive half cycles first. So the first case what we consider is when your input voltage is greater than, greater than 0. When your input voltage is greater than 0, uh, what is the output or whether the output is a, a rectified output or not. <coughs> Yeah. So can you quickly tell me when your input is greater than 0, what is the condition of diode D1 and what is the condition of diode D2? We are applying a positive voltage here. What is the condition of D1 and D2? Mm, yes, D1 on and D2 off, right. So that is basically uh, by looking at the uh, voltage V1. So V in is positive. So diode D1 uh, that leads to D1 turns on. And there's an inverting amplifier. So here uh, what we can expect is a negative voltage. So this will be a negative voltage. When, when this is negative, this diode D2 turns off. Right. D two turns off. Yes. So now, uh, if this is a condition, what is V one? We need to know what is V one, right? We know that V one uh, should V one will be equal to V one will be negative. What is V one? If your D one turns on, what we have from the first, uh, or if you draw the uh, equivalent circuit of the first amplifier, uh, it is. Uh, like this but this is minus plus plus is grounded here we have a resistance but d1 is on so it will be connected here d2 is off so that uh, that part is open from here it is open so no need to uh, look at this connection this will be open now this is connected to plus and plus is connected to this point this point is again by virtual ground this is at zero so this is also at zero so this point is also at uh, there is no current flowing here so this is at zero now this is also at zero right so how can i draw this uh, from here output and this is the equivalent circuit when uh, v in is positive <coughs> i hope this is clear so uh, this is r r r r right now if this is r and r if this is v in this voltage will be minus v in there is no doubt this voltage is minus v in, right if this voltage is minus v in what is v out v1 is minus v in what is v out any idea minus v in voltage is coming to the this point this the, the input to the uh, second stage is at this resistance r which is minus v in so again this will act as an inverting amplifier so minus r by r into this voltage again that will be equal to v in any question so this point is minus of r by r into v in that is minus v in now again this point here the output is minus of r by r into 
this quantity minus of r by r into v in again so that is equal to plus v uh, sanket where is resistor below you are asking about this resistor r yeah so look at this resistor r this diode is open there is no current flowing here right now by virtual ground virtual short this node is also at zero so if this is at zero uh, there is no current even from this side and there is no current flowing to this path so this point also is at zero volt that is how i have written uh, this as again a virtual short all right yeah so this is about the positive half cycle now let us look at the negative half cycle so for negative half cycle uh, okay let me write it here okay is 2 when your v in is less than 0 now when your v in is less than 0 what is the condition when v in is less than 0 uh, what we have here is a negative voltage this is negative now if this is negative uh, if this is negative what is the expected output here that will be definitely positive right and if this is positive uh, what what is the condition of this diode d1 and what is the condition of this diode d2 look at this now i i think this is clear right in the previous case when your vn is positive uh, uh, since it is a uh, since that positive voltage is coming to the inverting input of the op amp uh, the output will be negative now what is the this node voltage this node voltage is actually this is uh, this node voltage is zero plus uh, the drop across this node the, the current flowing here that is how we are actually getting a higher voltage here now um, when your input goes negative this terminal is turning positive and the moment when the diodes um, uh, negative terminal is connected to positive i can say the diode d1 is off d1 turns off and this is uh, this turns positive so let me write this is negative so this is positive this turns positive this the other node is equal to zero so uh, not zero uh, the the positive input terminal is uh, higher so i can say that d2 turns on right what about v1 v1 is at yeah v1 is equal to what what is what is v1 voltage are you guys with me what is v1 voltage v1 is positive right v1 voltage is positive so let us see what is v1 voltage so how to know that let us draw the equivalent circuit of that so let me check yeah we'll go to the next page um, minus plus this plus is grounded now here we have v in voltage now in the feedback i have this resistor but this terminal is open because d1 is off now from here the other resistor exist and from here we have a short right now this is v1 now uh there is no connection from here now from here from the top it is resistance again and we are connecting to minus and plus plus is connected to here and minus is connected to this point and this is v out all right now when your when your v in is negative let me uh, just maximize this when this v in is negative when this goes low uh, yeah that uh, we already said that what is the condition of this right so we need to know or what we need to know now is um we need to know what is v1 and what is uh, this voltage as well right yeah, let me mark this as some v2 because finally we need to find uh, output voltage right so <clears throat> i'm just marking this as v2 now this as v1 this is look at this point i'm just marking this as v2 in the previous case uh, when your diode is short your v1 is equal to 
v2 sorry uh, in the in the previous case uh, yeah in the previous case it is different because the d2 is off d2 is off and um, yeah your v2 is basically uh, zero in the previous case v2 was v2 was equal to zero now in this case look at this case yeah so look at this uh, now because of d2 because d2 turns on your v2 is equal to v1 so these two voltages are equal now our intention is to find what is What we need to do is we need to find what is the output voltage, whether it is a rectified version of the input or not. That is what we need to find, right? So now uh, let us look at this. Part. This is V2, so this is also equal to V2, or I can say that V2 is equal to V1 in this case. In the second case, V2 is equal to V1. So now what we will do is we will find what is V1, and then we will uh, find the second stage output voltage. But there is one difference here. What you can notice is. Uh, in the previous case, when uh, when D1 turns on, the output of this is actually going to the second stage. But now in the second case, uh, the output of this is going through the other path to this point, right? There is a small difference from the first stage and second stage because of the connection or the existence of the diode D1 and diode D2. Alright, now let us uh, look at this circuit and uh, continue our analysis. So this is the equivalent circuit uh, for negative half cycle. So when your V in is less than zero, this is the equivalent circuit. Now, how can I find a relationship between this V2 and V in? How can I write a relationship between V2 and V in? Whenever there is a voltage here, I can say that current is flowing towards this side. Right. So this current can be written as equal to V in by R right now that current there are two paths possible right uh, this current can flow whatever is the incoming current from the input signal this can flow in uh, two directions one is this and another one is through this right so can i write v in by r equal to the current flowing through the upper uh, to, uh, through the top path and the bottom path so what is that the top it is now this node is 0 because we have this virtual short so 0 minus um, what is other part this node right this node is equal to this also will be equal to v2 by, by virtual short so this is equal to v2 so I can say the current this current is not flowing this is the path of the current right so when I write this path it is 0 minus v2 divided by 2r plus what is other current this is again 0 minus this is v2 divided by r plus 0 minus v2 divided by r this is the path so our intention is to find v out if i want to find v out i should know what is v2 v2 and v1 are same in the negative half cycle so that is why i wrote this relation the incoming current is splitting into two so i am just writing a relationship between v in and v2 right now this when i simplify i can write this as minus v2 by 2r minus v2 by r or I can write what is V2, uh, V2 can be written as minus 2 by 3 into V in. This is the relationship between input voltage and V2. So V2 is not directly uh, minus V in, rather there is a relation which is only minus 2 third of V in. Right. Now <clears throat> with this, with the voltage or with the uh, voltage what we have at V2, if I look at the uh, rest of the or the second stage how can i simplify the second stage i have an op amp here which is minus plus this terminal i have v2 voltage uh, there is a negative feedback path this is a negative feedback path this is v out now this terminal i have uh, one resistance and another resistance and that is actually connected to uh, that is at zero voltage right? So I can actually consider or think about this as 2R here, R here with uh, this is the condition or this is the equivalent circuit. During negative half cycle, um, yeah, I think Sanket your question is, 
Uh, yeah, I, I'll, I'll give you the explanation for that. Your question is in the previous case, we remove a resistor. Similarly, why can't we remove resist two resistors in this case? So in the previous case, uh, what you need to notice here is you are thinking about, yeah, you are, we are talking about this resistance, right, R. So in the previous case, there is no current flow through this R. Right, in the previous case, there is no current flow. Why there is no, no current flow? This is open. There is no current uh, flowing from this side to here, right? There is no current flow. This is open. And I cannot say that there can be a current flow from here because this side it is open and this is the input to the op amp. So there is no current flow through this, through the resistor. Is it clear? But now what we are considering is a path which is carrying current. The, this current is not flowing into the in, input of the op amp, it is actually flowing through this resistor only. Alright, yeah. So look at this. Now how can we write V out? What is V out in this case? Now this is as same as a uh, non-inverting amplifier. Non-inverting amplifier gain is 1 plus feedback resistance R divided by input side resistance which is 2R into V2. What is V2? V2 is minus 2, two third of V in. So V out can be written as uh, this is equal to two, um, 3 by 2 into minus 2 third of V in which is equal to minus of V in. Right. So what, what happened here? When, when V in is negative, V in is negative, V out is equal to minus of V in which is again a positive. Right. So if I look at the transfer curve of this circuit where we draw V in and V out here, when input uh, goes positive, in, when the input turns, uh, input is greater than 0, output is again um, V in as per this discussion, your output is equal to, V out is equal to V in. So we can say that the side, the curve will be like this. Now when your input is negative, output is equal to minus of V in. Minus of V in is again, output is equal to minus of V in. Since your input is negative, again output is uh, positive only, right. So this is how we can uh, look at the transfer curve of this full wave rectifier. So for a full wave rectifier, we know that both for positive and uh, negative half of half cycles of the input, output should be positive, and that is true in this case, right? So uh, the this circuits, both precision rectifiers, uh, whether half wave rectifier, full wave rectifiers, are widely used for precision applications, where we need to rectify voltages as small as milli or micro volt range, right? So that is what we discussed today. If you have any questions. Please you can uh, ask now.